Hello everybody and welcome back and as I have announced in a few videos back I'm starting a new series and this one is called Operation Mode Sucker. Yeah, so basically I'm going to build a refuel base on Minmus and one of the key ingredients for that will be an orbital station which is supposed to uh, store some fuel and also provide some capability of refining or should the need arise but the main refinery will be on the surface. Some keen viewers may recognize the shape. This is the Ringo Gigante refueler station I built a few videos back. You can see it in uh, the link on the top left corner and this really is not easy to get into orbit because as you can see it is huge and yeah to get this into orbit you really have to go slow because if you go too fast then the aerodynamic forces will rip it apart i mean literally it will explode disintegrate whatever i'm going to uh, put some footage of that at the end of this video but for now let's just enjoy the final and successful ascent of this gigantic refuel station into orbit i did make some modifications to it uh, since i showed you how to build it for instance there are uh, some fairings around the resource converters I also added solar panels and I added some more docking ports. I experimented a little bit with the aerodynamic, uh, what's it called? The aerodynamic display to see where, and yeah, you can see I'm desperately trying to get it into some kind of vector I can use because now I have to separate one of the stages very soon and this only worked well when the craft was almost upright otherwise everything would explode and there we go separation of stage one confirmed now we're finally finally getting into the upper atmosphere where drag is not as much of an issue as it is in the lower atmosphere and yeah if some of you remember my failure with the almost water landing you can watch that as well on the video on the left and yeah so we're getting close to escaping Kerbin at least I hope so uh, this video, just for reference, this video is sped up to four times regular speed. So you can imagine, yeah, you can see me uh, using the debug menu to activate the drag information. Why am I using the debug menu and not F12? Well, uh, my video recording software is configured so that F12 starts and stops the video. I have since, of course, disabled that function in the video recording software, which is Bandicam, by the way. But uh, when I was recording this, I just wanted to uh, be able to view the aerodynamic drag uh, vectors, so I did it via the debug menu. But there was no cheating involved in getting this space station into orbit. And we did not only get it into orbit, we also got it somewhere else. Um, yeah, you already heard it. I wanted to build a Minmus base, so of course this is going to Minmus orbit and will be the relay station in orbit around that little green moon. So we're coming closer to the edge of the atmosphere. And then of course we have one more big stage separation. You can see here deactivating me, uh, you can see here me deactivating the aerodynamic drag overlay. Of course it's no more use since we're almost out of the atmosphere. And now it's time to separate this stage 
And fingers crossed. Boom! Well, that certainly looked scary, but fortunately it was just some debris colliding into other debris and I could continue on with my journey. And the vehicle is now merely just the space station and six boosters strapped to it and of course some tanks. It looks quite a lot different than uh, when it was a launch pad. And also the frame rate has increased significantly. Since of course we don't have hundreds of parts anymore, but just a few hundred. Well, I think it was even above thousand or something, the part count on the launch pad. So what can we do now? Now we're out of the atmosphere. Of course we have to place maneuver node and circularize our orbit, which is of course standard operating procedure. But maybe we can get a Minmus encounter. Well, not yet. So we just try to get a stable orbit and then we select a point that is more suitable to get up there to the green little moon. Yeah, you can see the solar panels in action. So I got some lights as well, so you can see something in the dark. And now we have separated the fairings around the resource collectors. Oh, convergers, of course. We don't collect any resources in orbit now, do we? Now it's time to ditch the aerodynamic cap, which also included the fairing base using time acceleration to drift further away from it and to get to a maneuver node more quickly. And now we're circularizing with our seven remaining big ass Kerberdyne engines. The Rhino engine as it's now called since KSP version 1.0. Well, it goes, goes off the tongue a lot easier than KR2L or whatever it's a uh, serial number or, or manufacturing number or name or whatever it's supposed to be. <laughs> the, the thing is, this is a game they could have called it Rhino right from the beginning, right? Right? No. Yeah, bad pun there, sorry. No. Me doing the boring part, which is trying to get a maneuver node. Boring, of course, for you for viewing it while I was doing it. I was not as bored as you watching this, but nevertheless, we got an encounter with Minmus. And of course, fine tuning it a little bit so we can get closer, because the closer you are to a planet, the more effective your burn will be, which of course is called the Oberth effect. If your periapse is lower than your apoapse, then your burn at periapse will be more efficient than if it would be a perfectly circular orbit. Which is, of course, very, very blunt simplification of the concept. But I'm no physicist and I'm no astronomer. There are a lot of uh, people who are more knowledgeable about this stuff than I am. I just repeat what I heard and read about it. So getting close to our encounter, no, not to our encounter, our maneuver node. You can see here in this picture very well that I have used some of those uh, girder uh, parts to stabilize the ring uh, or attach it more firmly to the booster. This is done by, well, just adding the girders to the booster and then using a lot of struts to connect the ring to those stabilization arms or whatever you want to call them. Of course the solar panels give us enough electricity to uh, power the reaction wheels. Of course uh, there are some I have added to the space station. Now we have done our burn and it is time to time accelerate to Minmus. So why am I not doing it? Well, this is 
the plight of someone who records something a few days in advance and then does not remember why he does not warp. Ah, yeah, now I remember. I wanted to optimize my orbit a little bit. There we go, as I mentioned before. Getting the periops closer to the surface. Oh, well, closer to the celestial body where I want to have my final orbit in the end. So that's what we're going to do. This will be some fine tuning of my approach. Of course, the further you are away from your target, the less delta V you have to use to manipulate that orbit around uh, your target moon or target planet. But of course, the less precise it will be because even little thrusts will have huge impacts on your final orbit. And then now we finally time accelerate. So there we are now in the sphere of influence of Minmus, which is of course, as any good Kerbal knows, made of ice cream. At least that's what we like to think now, don't we? Once again, fine-tuning our orbit, our target orbit, of course, moving that behemoth of a station into position for the maneuver node. And soon we will start our final burn of this journey to get the space station around Minmus. And this space station will be the hub where all my interplanetary spacecraft will uh, supposedly dock and uh, will refuel before heading off into interplanetary space or to other uh, planets or whatnot. I really hope that <laughs> that my, uh, my game and my computer can manage the part count because of course the station already has hundreds of parts and if you know me, my spacecraft are huge. And so you can imagine that my interplanetary ships will have hundreds of parts as well. So this is going to be interesting when they will try to dock with each other. So now transferring the fuel that is left in the booster because we don't want to waste it. Why waste perfectly good fuel when you can put it in your refuel station? Because that's what it's for now, isn't it? And once we have done that, we can decouple it and glide away into the sun of Kerbal and then bask in the magnificence of our gigantic refuel station in orbit around Minmus. Of course, the cargo bays are empty. Those can hold some more additional tanks in the future if I uh, would like to do it. But for now, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.